Well, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at something a little different. This is from Power Queen and this is going to be a MPPT multi-point power tracking solar charge controller. Now I'll be honest, I didn't even know that Power Queen had these charge controllers to go along with all of their LiPo 4 batteries, so I think it's going to be a pretty cool little little test to see what it what it comes with, but in the box you're going to get this is a Bluetooth capable MPPT, so you got your Bluetooth instructions and then you've got your actual MPPT instructions. Now folks, one thing I do want to point out is that on these instruction manuals from Power Queen, they do a really good job of making sure that it's in correct English. They give you a lot of pictures and how to properly set up the wiring if you've never set one of the things up before. And they give you a whole lot of charging parameters to set this thing up for LiPo 4. How to set up your over discharge, your equalizing voltage, your boost voltage. A lot of stuff that you're going to need in order to properly charge up your battery. So, so in the box, here's how it comes. And first thing I see is going to be a remote temperature sensor. And then this is actually going to be your Bluetooth dongle or adapter, but let's see what it, uh, see what it looks like. There you go. So that's going to be your Bluetooth adapter and it looks like it's just a standard phone type jack that's probably going to plug into the side or the bottom of that charge controller. And then your actual, well, there's one more little small package in here. What's this? This looks like uh, mounting hardware for the charge controller. We'll open that up here in a little bit. And the actual controller itself. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, that's actually really nice. It's got that, uh, I don't know what you call it, but like that soft feel uh, metal. I, I don't know. It's not, it's not glossy, it's kind of matte, but it, feels, it does feel good. And here's one thing that I like to see is that on, on some of these charge controllers, the inputs for your wiring is so small it's hard to get a ferrule in there. I like to put ferrules on the end of my wires to, you know, to keep it nice and solid. And you got a very large opening to put some pretty heavy gauge wire down there. And that's where your temp sensor is going to be. And this is going to be your Bluetooth dongle to plug in right there. Now you got Bluetooth. Very large heat sink on the back. Looks like it's powder coated. So overall, it, it, it appears very solid just from just from the unboxing but feels like a nice little solar charge controller and this right here we've got charging current 30 amp load current 20 amp max voltage of solar panels is 100 volts max power of solar panels is 400 watts so you can put up to 100 volts or 400 watts at 12 volts or 800 watts at 24 volts off of this uh, charge controller so so this is kind of cool. This is a mounting template. So it comes with the holes installed. So you can put this on a wall and mark out your holes. So you don't have to try to fiddle, fiddle and find the holes on the back of that charge controller. Just put this against the wall, mark it, and then you got your holes mounted. So, okay, so I've got my PV cables inserted into the MPPT. I did go ahead and have to create some battery cables. And these are the uh, ferrules that I'm talking about that I like to use that will be inserted into here. And I just bought this really simple ferrule kit. Comes with a crimper and quite a few uh, ferrules for different size wires. But these kits are, you know, around 20 bucks, and you get a ton of these ferrules. But I, I, I truly think this is the best type of connection. So I'm going to go ahead and put these into the battery slots here. Now I did download the solar app. It looks like a pretty generic app. It's not a Power Queen app, but they just said to download, search solar app in App Store. So you don't get a QR code or anything, but I did find the solar app. We're gonna see if it works well, <laughs> but who knows? So let me get a battery hooked up to it. So for this simple test, we're gonna be using this little 50 amp hour Power Queen battery. And you always want to get your battery hooked up before you install or before you hook up your solar panels because you want that solar panel input to have somewhere to go. You don't want to fry your MPPT, so always connect your battery first. And if you're watching this, you know that. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. OK, 
Okay, it looks like we do have the battery LED light on. A battery, this is showing 13.3 volts. Let's see how accurate that is. 13.3 volts. So, so far this is accurate. Now this does come pre-installed with a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate charging parameter setup. I'm gonna see if we can connect to the app so we can change it hopefully easier through the app instead of this. I don't see any kind of light on this thing on the Bluetooth dongle, so let's open up let's open up the app that I downloaded. Add it now. That looks like it. Hit OK. Okay. Cool. So now that little link light is blinking, so we are actually connected to the solar charge controller now. Okay, here's a close-up of the app because I realized my original video was completely overexposed, but we're gonna connect to the charge controller. You can see here my solar panels are only putting in two watts. That's because my battery is now fully charged, but it gives you information on the on the solar panel. So we're 37.4 volts. It's only putting in 0.05 current or two watts because again, the battery is fully charged. My battery is sitting at 14.4 volts. And then you can go into settings, which is what I like here, and you can update all of the charger profiles that you want to. So you can go into charger settings here. So you can go update all of these charging parameters, your upper limit of charge, your over voltage protection, your boost charge, your float, your absorption, and, and they're all super easy to change. So just click on one of these tiles and you can move the slider back and forth. Okay, now this controller again comes pre-installed with lithium iron phosphate charging parameters. So for right now, I'm gonna keep this as is, but Overall, it's a pretty decent little app. I wasn't expecting much off of a solar app that had two reviews and one star rating. Now it's time to hook up some solar panels. Now I only have a 300 watt solar panel, so we're not probably gonna get to the 30 amp max on this thing, but we're gonna see uh, if we can get this charge controller to charge up this battery. Because one thing I wanna test is when this battery gets full, and I put a load on it, will this charge controller recognize that and start inputting more watts instead of it just kind of sitting idle like some of these charge controllers do. So we're going to test that out, but let me go. All right, folks, so I've got my all powers, big 400 watt solar panel out there hooked up. And right now that thing is pushing 266 watts according to the watt meter. And the app is showing 264 watts. So that's actually pretty efficient if this is all correct. Now you can see here on the screen, hopefully on the actual charge controller, that my battery is now 13.8 volts and you can kind of scroll through these menus if you don't use the app. Of course, I don't have any load. Temperature is 36 degrees Celsius. But, but I'm pushing right now 18.3 amps. Now let me figure out how to get this load turned off because you can see I got the load icon and I'm not gonna be running any loads. Okay, there we go. Got the load icon, got the load turned off now. So it's just charging the battery. It's not putting any type of power into these load outputs. So this does obviously accept you can connect up some type of, of load on this, but I don't ever really use that, but it can support up to 240 watts out of these terminals off a of 12 volt, 480 watts if you're running 24 volt. But so again, this seems to be working pretty well. So the solar panel has done its job. It has charged up my little 50 amp hour battery and you can see I'm only putting in about two watts. My battery is sitting at 14.4 volts. So what I wanna do now is I want to run a load off of this battery and monitor to see how quickly this charge controller will start charging up that battery with a load on it. So to do that, I just have one of my little 500 watt inverters. I'm going to hook up a little light array to it. There we go. And so immediately that charge controller is putting in around 189, 200 watts back into the battery with this load running. So it's doing what it should be doing. Um, and, and the only reason I wanted to test this folks is because I have seen and I do have some charge controllers where if it gets the battery topped off, it kind of just sits there. And when the battery starts to deplete itself or if you're running a load off of it, it takes a while for some of my charge controllers to actually kick in and start charging up the battery. This one 
has done it uh, almost immediately. So again, I'm putting in 202 watts. So cool. So it works. It works perfectly right now. And I, I do I do need to say that I looked in the directions, and this temperature sensor is only used for lead acid batteries. It's not intended what I thought it was going to be intended for, and that is to use as low temp charging protection. This is only for lead acid batteries, and it clearly states that in the directions not to use with lithium iron phosphate batteries. So, but other than that, I think this uh, 30 amp charge controller is doing a pretty pretty good job. So. There you go, folks. This is the Power Queen MPPT 30 amp. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.